30 days ago, David and Ploof downgraded their GeForce cards for our one month Intel Arc Battle Mage challenge. And I am almost ready to give their old cards back. Mine don't Powerhouse need it. GPUs to Intel's more power friendly Battle Mage B580. I don't well, need it. Card that's meant for I don't need it. Even 1440p gaming. I definitely don't need it. I need it! Or do you? Yes, but probably not for the reasons you might think. Really? Crashes and bugs? Nope. Can't game at 4K? Not that either. Okay, what is it? I really want to play Stalker 2. Oh. Other than that, the last 30 days went so smooth that it's actually been three more weeks and I still haven't put my 4090 back into my computer. And I want to take a moment to say, dear new Intel CEO guy, please keep making these. My month wasn't as smooth. Smooth. Like this segue to our sponsor. Charge, keep your devices juiced with the Shard Geek 170 watt, 24,000 milliamp hour power bank. It's got PD 3.1 fast charging, three USB ports, and even a neat little information screen. Pick one up using our link today. David, what went well for you over this past, actually more than a month now, we're at like 80 days or something. Really? It's flown by. Right? I was really impressed with the performance of the B580. Me too. Obviously it's a bit of a downgrade coming from a 3090 and a 7900 XT, and you have to turn down some settings, set the internal resolution a yeah. little bit lower, so I can hit that 60 FPS target for my living room TV. And so unless I was choosing to focus on it, I really wasn't losing it on fun. And at the end of the day, isn't that what matters? 100%. This whole experience really made me question the importance of technical presentation and video game graphics. I was in the unique position where my partner had no idea that I switched out the GPU. So that forced me to reevaluate my hyper fixation on sharpness and yeah. visuals and just join her on her level when it came to just showing me vistas in avowed and That's being good wowed by them. And That's it. Initially, I was like, Oh, that looks grainy and upscaled, <laughs> and oh, I can see the artifacts in the fur. But pretty quickly, when I allowed myself to do it, I just started seeing the art instead of just the graphics. And so when games were working right, I'd say that I had a really positive experience. But how about you, Mr. I own a display? <laughs> <laughs> I also was pleasantly surprised by just how well everything kind of worked. Um, I was also playing a lot of AAA games and I did the same thing. I didn't turn my resolution down to 1080p, but I was upscaling constantly because native 4K is just super hard to run. Ugh. But uh, God of War Ragnarok, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Silent Hill 2, um, they all just ran pretty well as long as I stuck to low or medium settings with upscaling. The only game that I pretty much gave up on was Stalker 2. <laughs> and I don't know if it's just because it's a first person shooter and so I could really feel the lack of frames mm -hmm. uh, with the mouse a lot easier. I gave up on it real fast. I did run into a bunch of upscaling weirdness that we'll kind of talk about later, but it actually looked okay. It wasn't the worst I've ever seen. However, 12 gigs of VRAM is just straight up not enough for a native 4K. No. I, NVIDIA disagrees. Uh, they're wrong. Fortunately, I don't need native. You know, uh, XESS is pretty solid and I'm on a 32 inch 4K monitor, but I often play like pretty lean back like this. So, you know, the distance is a bit more. I would look at textures and I would nitpick. Like as soon as I turn on the game, I'd sit there and be like, oh, that looks ass and that looks bad. But once I just actually started playing, that kind of goes away, Yeah. right? Like you really just start playing the game and you stop like looking at weird textures and stuff. 100%. You, st you slowly stop noticing them. The one thing that really impacted my immersion though was pop-in and like LOD pops, level huh. of detail pops. Even if the rock looks bad, when it like starts forming differently as you get closer and closer yes. or like background details start kind of appearing, it's like, oh, that's not, that's so jarring that it just pops in. I don't like that at all. Yeah, I didn't have too many of those issues with the games I was playing where the LODs were popping, because I agree, any kind of pop in, yeah. super distracting, or if there's like really bad stair stepping or aliasing, that's yep. really bad. Yep. But I was usually able to get my settings to a place where the whole image was clear enough and smooth and non distracting. Yeah, for the most part, it didn't affect me. Like once I stopped worrying about it, it was totally fine. But what went poorly. For me, the biggest issue was just stability. I've had more crashes in the last 30 days than I had over the last several years combined. <laughs> the worst offender was the computer that I only DDU'd. I did it again with everything checked off yep. and I was getting like one to two crashes every couple hours. That's a lot. 
It was mostly in Avowed, which uh, is an okay. Obsidian game, so that might just be the Obsidian experience, not yep. the Intel experience. And when I switched to my other computer, which had a full Windows wipe, it was still getting crashes and issues where like the whole computer would turn off or the game would crash itself. But overall, it was a much better experience. And now that I'm playing South of Midnight, I actually haven't had a single crash in that game. And that's on the okay. computer that was less stable. So it might just be an Obsidian thing. The other really big issue that I had was streaming video. And I'm not talking mm. Twitch, where I'm like streaming over the internet. I'm just doing a video call over Discord to an editor, yep. reviewing a video. Basically, it's video playback in a browser while streaming, and it couldn't do it. I've never had an issue on any computer I've ever used, including like pretty low powered laptops. Yeah. And it was so bad that I had to stop the streaming to the editor so they couldn't see what I was looking at. And I would just tell them the time code so they could scrub through. And I found that extremely frustrating. I also uh, struggled with capture. I was trying to stream a Dota match to a friend over Discord. Mm -hmm. Same thing pretty much. Normally it's fine. You know, I have a 4090 typically, and it does a great <laughs> job. I bet if the B580 was only acting as like a capture card or that's all it was doing, it'd be fine. And I get that I'm gaming at 4K and that's not at all what these cards are for, but it definitely struggled to just stream while gaming. And I imagine if we were doing everything AV1, yeah. we probably wouldn't have had these issues, but that's just not the state of streaming these days. Yeah. We're not at everything no. is using AV1. No, they're really not. Other than that though, I kind of struggled to capture anything at 4K. So for instance, I was doing a lot of like print screening and just screen capping uh, for random stuff. Even if I just took a print screen of my monitors mm -hmm. and then scrubbed through it in paint, it would like chug. <laughs> and that's just, you know, going up and down in yeah. paint. I also found that I got a couple of graphical issues. They yeah. weren't major. You know, it was just like Cloud's pauldron looked weird and FF7 is all sparkly at one point for no reason. But aside from that weird texture issue, the biggest things for me was XCSS. Mm. I noticed upscaling and it was pretty good. It definitely looks more like DLSS 3 than like one or two. But for instance, with God of War Ragnarok, it was trying to upscale the preview windows when you go to upgrade your abilities. Mm -hmm. And that looked really bad. It, like, it's like garbly. Yeah. Like it genuinely looks like a awful mess. <laughs> like I was completely just enraptured, you know, by the game and good to go. Yeah. And I went to go upgrade an ability and I was like, oh yeah, right. I'm playing on my B580. Playing on low, you'd occasionally get like, oh, the water there looks terrible. Yeah. You know, you'd come to a certain scene and all of a sudden you're reminded, oh yeah, I'm playing on low. Mm -hmm. Or a character would be way off in the distance and you're not normally looking at them, so it's fine but all of a sudden you look at them and their face is a blurry mess that just looks terrible. But most of that I can ignore, right? I can I can kind of tune it out and ignore it. I did have a few other more just performance issues. For example, I was playing Tabletop Simulator with my cousin and I was waiting for him to take his turn and so I booted up Nubby's Number Factory, which is just like a Peggle uh, roguelite. Span deficit over 100%, here. 100%, <laughs> absolutely. And normally that's fine. I can play a game over TTS, especially a light game like Nubby's or Bellatro or whatever, yeah. but I would go to like, like launch my ball down the peggle path and it would just like the frame rate on on nubbies would just tank and then i encountered something similar in bellatro mm -hmm. if i'm waiting for a dota match i'll boot up bellatro put it on my main screen and it ran great except for when i play a hand it would huh. chug for like just a second and it's you know it's not enough to make me stop playing bellatro or anything like that but it's just those minor smoothness aspects of it that i kind of like that's what i'm paying for when I'm shelling out for like a bigger graphics card. I'm, I'm, I'm paying for everything to just kind of work smoothly and perfectly at 4K yeah. specifically. I also did have one crash. Okay. Mine was really stable for the most part, um, but I went to full screen a web page while I had FF7 open. The whole thing just crashed so hard. FF7 just crashed on me. Oh, my computer just came back. That took forever. To the point where I was about to shut it off when it like finally came back on. And when it did, my sound was gone. There's no audio right now. It's totally busted. I had to do a full reset of my system, like a full hard shutdown, because it wasn't even shutting down gracefully. Is your sound going through your GPU? Is it like an HDMI thing or is it just a headphone? I don't know if it was just a weird driver crash or something. Cause yeah, I have a Go XLR and um, that's got speakers coming out of the Go XLR, but it was just gone. Like oh. I tried YouTube, I tried a couple of other things. I tried enabling like sound settings and stuff. And it, it was just, it was just gone. I, I have no explanation for it. It didn't happen again, but it was bad. And last and definitely least, uh, <laughs> I really wanted to play Half-Life 2 RTX after we finished filming. <laughs> and I went home and I sat down in my chair and I went to, Right. 
I've got a B580. Not it's happening. it's not gonna play Half-Life 2 RTX at 4K, of course, so I just didn't even try. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I don't like it. I actually liked this card so much that I went and bought one. And it fits inside the commuter bag from LTTstore.com. It's great. It fits a B580. That's all I needed to fit. One thing I neglected to mention when we were upgrading our, well, downgrading our computers in the last video is that I basically did this as a test to see what to upgrade from my 1660 Ti mm -hmm. in my living room computer. Cause I never use it cause the GPU isn't good enough for my 4K TV. It turns out this card with 12 gigs of VRAM is totally valid. Like you can actually game at 4K. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to turn stuff down, but it works. So yeah, I bought the card and I'm super happy with it. I already installed it. That's an empty box. Way to go. And the best part is I literally walked into a Memory Express and said, hey, I want a B580. And they had one and I paid like $35 over MSRP, but I got the Challenger OC card. So that's like pretty typical for an AIB card to just pay, you know, a little bit over. And uh, I walked out. It was how buying computer parts should be. I don't have to wait for anything. Remember? <laughs> Those were the days. Yeah. I didn't buy one, but the rules stated that if I sold the GPU and I was happy with the ARC, I could keep it. And I'm pretty damn happy. With the state of the GPU market, it took me literally five minutes in one conversation to sell the 3090. <laughs> <laughs> and after realizing that sharper graphics were adding a really questionable amount to my fun, I've officially decided not to pay for a card that costs about a bajillion dollars more than your arc over there. To be honest, my plan was to buy a 9070 XT at yep. the end of this because it just seems like a great value card. Yep. But I've changed my mind with how hard it's been to find one that's not one of the, the triple OC super versions yep. that costs like twice as much as MSRP. Yep. It's just really frustrating. I'm so sick of the current state of the GPU market and I'm just gonna hold on to these B580s for another year or two and see how things settle down and just Play games. Just yeah. That made it sound like you're keeping both B580s, but you're keeping. Oh, I thought you were keeping your 3090. No, I sold the 3090. Oh, but wait, you have the 7900 XT. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna sell that one too. Oh, you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh I'm I done. didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm done with 4K. Done with it. <laughs> it's so stupid. It doesn't add to your fun. <laughs> but it looks so pretty. The thing that I've had to realize during this challenge is that how much I've allowed myself to buy into the marketing hype that is a cycle of constantly needing new tech. I get it. It's partly, you know, natural training. Like as we've been shown better and better graphics, we're yeah. like, wow, I need that, I need that, I need that. And it's part of it is just the choice and just accepting that like things can look a certain way and it's still beautiful. I think for me, a big part of going down that giant upgrade path started with shooters because you feel it, you feel a low frame rate a lot better 100%. with the mouse. When I was really trying to get into like, Counter-Strike and Valorant when that first launched, that's when I was really like, oh, I need a better GPU. I need faster memory. I need a better CPU. It was like a arms race. I am a little nitpicky. I do no <laughs> I do notice. This is right off camera laughing at me. I, 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 do, I do notice like DLSS even. I notice low quality textures. I notice a bad model. Mm -hmm. So there was this like chasing the dragon that is quality. Mm -hmm. And I've I've got it. I'm keeping my 4090 mm -hmm. and when I want to play like a really demanding game or something that I want to look absolutely stunning and I don't want to just like, you know, lounge back on my couch with a controller and, and not really care yeah. about that stuff, then I'll play on my 4090 on my computer and my den and whatever and that's fine. But it was, it was very refreshing to actually like stop caring about that stuff. The 4090 is obviously a greater card than most people watching this video have, but like you can be excited for what you have and not constantly be chasing the next thing. And there's so many games out there that like, yeah, there might be a big AAA that you wanna play that's a little more demanding and mm -hmm. maybe you can't play it right now and that does suck. But there's a lot of other games that just come out all the time. Like I've been playing a ton of Schedule 1 on the B580 and it runs, you know, great. And even with the B580, it has all the modern features you need to get games running. Yeah. I think for a couple more years, if you have a card like that, you can play the modern AAA games. And even when it becomes old enough that you can't, there's so many games to fall back on, literally hundreds of thousands of games that I haven't played. <laughs> Maybe it's a good time just to look back and play some classics that I've always kind of just ignored. Totally, or look at your Steam library that's got a bunch of unplayed games and maybe actually play them for once. But I guess the only question now is, you know, what's gonna happen in the future with Ark? Mm. It's pretty clear that it's not going anywhere on mobile. 
The new laptop chips with Battlemage XE graphics are finally competitive with AMD, even winning in some key areas. But Intel's whole desktop lineup has been constantly just rumored that it's gonna be canceled, whether it's Alchemist in the early stages, oh, Alchemist did poorly, so Battlemage is done. And now the new B770 and B780s are rumored to be canceled. So like, what about Celestial? Like maybe that's canceled too, who knows? I feel like it's the one thing that Intel is doing right these days. I'm yeah. excited about these GPUs yeah. and the, the ways they can break forward. I've heard, from the script that I'm about to read, that next-gen Celestial is almost <laughs> certainly still gonna happen on desktop. But I heard there was supposed to be a higher-end Battle Mage card, and that's gone now. Yeah, there's like... That sucks. It's, I don't think there's gonna be a B780, which sucks, because like, imagine the cards we have. Yeah. Add like 100, 150 dollars, mm -hmm. but now 16 gigs of VRAM. Ooh. So I'm not, you know, I could do native 4K. Yeah. Performance might be bad, but I'm not gonna run out of VRAM. And then four or six more XE cores. <sighs> It would be like a really, really solid lower mid-range choice. I think we're on the cusp of graphics cards being competitive again. Please. It just things need to settle down. Please. Uh, with the import market uh, being kind of crazy. Oh. And hopefully that does. But it's exciting that yeah. Intel finally has a card that I think a lot of people will want. Again, please, Intel, let the engineers cook. Take your time. Battle Mage's competency has been pleasantly surprising just like this pleasantly surprising segue to our sponsor. Squarespace. Building a user-friendly, visually captivating website for your business might not seem like an easy task. But luckily, with Squarespace, you're set up with a blueprint for success. Their new guided design system, aptly named Squarespace Blueprint, helps you build your own unique online presence from the ground up with professionally curated layouts and styling options. Then you can dive into the details with their Fluid Engine Editor, which features intuitive drag and drop building blocks. Once you're happy with your page, you can then use their comprehensive email marketing tools to engage with your audience, generate leads, and start making some money. Plus, their advanced analytical tools let you see what's working and what needs a little tweaking for your next campaign. So don't wait. Visit squarespace.com forward slash LTT for a free trial and to receive 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're looking for something similar, how about the time that Luke and I tried original Arc Alchemist for a month? <laughs> I gotta confess, the reason I didn't want to do it this time was because I was so scarred from that time, but it seems like it was fine. Yeah, that went way for you, way worse for you guys, and this was actually pretty good. And I think it really depends on the kind of games you play. Like you yeah. were saying, mouse and keyboard, it might not be ideal to lose out on that amount of frame rates, yeah. but for you know, six, for platformers and action yeah. games, 60 hertz is fine. Dude, back in the yeah. day, the overall system just bugginess was a huge problem, whereas 100%. it seems yeah. like most of your stuff boiled down to, I think you have a bad INC is actually what I think it is. It's possible. Because I've run into similar issues on other Ryzen systems mm. where swapping out the RAM helps a little, but it's swapping out the CPU yeah. helps a lot. So, um, and I know the lab hasn't had any stability issues with B580, so. Yeah, mine was yeah. pretty good. Like I had like one weird crash, but yeah. other than that, it was totally fine. Um, it was pretty solid all around. Like I actually, I, I bought the card. I am blown away by that. I bought the card. I'm I am putting blown it in my other computer. away by that. I I